SMA. I always wore a seatbelt in that one time. I didn't. And my head hit the windshield, actually cracked the windshield, and they were still picking glass out of my skull two weeks later. At the age of 28, my neck was broken, totally paralyzed below my shoulders. Four months after the accident, the hospital sent me home on a pass. And that's where reality really hit, because I'd go into the living room and see the piano and the organ and realize I'd never play them again. Now, if assisted suicide had been legal in 1980, I might not be sitting here today. But I'm really grateful that um, people didn't take my my cries that my life is over seriously and they provided what I really needed, which was you know, support, encouragement, prayers. I had a lot of good medical care and rehabilitation. And I eventually came out of the depression. Another thing that really helped me a lot uh, was talking to other people with spinal cord injuries who assured me that life does go on. I was at a camp for people with disabilities. And there was a really precious little girl there who was paralyzed, totally paralyzed and unable to speak. And basically all she could do was just sit in her wheelchair. But for some reason I was just drawn to her. And one day I asked her attendant if, if I could hold her on my lap. And so here was this precious little girl looking up at me and all of a sudden I felt such a sense of love and compassion that I started crying like I am now. And I, I prayed silently, Lord, this is crazy. Why am I feeling such love and compassion for this little girl who can't do a thing except just sit here? And then clear as day, I heard this in my mind. Jean, this is exactly how I love you. And I knew then and there that was God's answer. There's always hope. Um, the thing about depression is when you're in it, it seems like there's no way out, but there is. And I would encourage people to surround themselves with encouraging people who will support them with prayer and encouragement. Um, if they need medical care or pain management, that's available, but there's always hope. I believe life is to be chosen over what some would call death with dignity. There's nothing dignified about deciding someone's life is not worth living. If a patient has a need, let's address it. Our goal should be to eliminate the problem, not the patient. It's not our prerogative to take anyone's life. Outside of natural death, there is no one whose life is not worth fighting for. Looking back over my life, I see a lot of mountains and valleys. The road hasn't always been easy, but it's been good, and it's definitely been worth fighting for.